Praise be Jesus and Mary. <clears throat> Joseph in the New Testament has very little to tell us, and yet in the little that is spoken about him, we are told that he is a just man. And that's, you know, from Holy Scriptures, that is actually to say quite a bit. A man of, you might say, that helps us to understand Joseph of the New Testament, the one betrothed to Our Lady and to our, this foster father of our Lord. To look in the Old Testament for a parallel, we find uh, the Joseph of old, the dreamer, uh, the man who God would raise up to be head of a nation, second only to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is put on a par in that analogy as God the Father. We know in the from the Old Testament that Joseph was, he was sold into slavery, <coughs> eventually being freed of that and risen up by the head of the people to become second to that people. We are told the analogy there too is, you know, he saved that people by giving them bread. And he was entrusted, or he was given, Pharaoh's daughter. And the analogy here, you know, if we look at Pharaoh as say a symbol of God the Father, that we have, well, this bread is the obvious sign of our Lord. And we know too that Pharaoh's daughter would be a sign, a symbol of Our Lady. And these two things put together, we are told finally in the, as well in that, is, is go to Joseph. For all your needs, go to Joseph. And one of the first saints, this is one of the hidden saints in the church, actually, St. Joseph, because it's, for us of modern times, we. Just for us, it's very natural to have a tender devotion to St. Joseph, and yet it, the devotion to St. Joseph is really only going back a few hundred years. You know, 1700, 1600 maybe. Um, not to say that there is no, devo you know, no devotion, but very, very little devotion to St. Joseph. And people might go, well, why? That's strange. And it's, it's for the sake of Jesus and Mary that Joseph, as it were, is hidden away until people have a fuller grasp of the meaning of the life, the life of our Lord and Our Lady. Uh, and particularly with regards to Our Lady's immaculate, her particular her virginity in particular, until that was well established among the people of God, uh, Joseph, as it were, remains hidden. So as not to overemphasize the spousal relationship, because most modern men, as soon as you say spouses, in fact, even before, you know, unfortunately in today's culture, you know, just if you have a boyfriend and girlfriend, almost it, in today's world, you almost wonder, well, I hope they're still virgins. I hope they're still chaste. Um, because it's uh, that, uh, that, uh, that difficulty when a couple comes together, especially in our world where there's, there's so many temptations and people don't realize how to defend themselves and keep themselves, you know, from sin. And being sensitive to the fact that they're putting themselves in, in a near occasion. Uh, you know, this is one of the things where Joseph is a beautiful example, both in the Old Testament as well as in the New. We know that Joseph of old uh, was very chaste when put into the time, of tri the, the, into the test, the trial, he actually would fly. And that's what actually his perseverance and chastity is what would land him in jail. <laughs> that's, that's actually why he would end up being flung into jail when he was actually perfectly innocent. <coughs> Another thing, though, that could be put as an analogy to this, as I was pondering this, this uh, between Joseph of old, as it were, being hidden away in prison, unknown, and yet holy, very holy. Joseph too, St. Joseph, our patron that we celebrate today, is hidden away until his own time when he would be brought forth and now the church, as it were, I mean, she's put him into the liturgy. Not only did it little by little, but he's now mentioned in all the canons. This is something that sometimes people miss. Uh, he first was put into the Roman canon. And that was what, that's, you know, that was the only, only canon if you wanted St. Joseph, you know, actually it was a written into the canon, uh, was only the Roman canon. Now he's in all the canons of the Mass. You, he's mentioned. Uh, as we know, with our Lord, with our Lady, and our Lord, obviously, um, 
but the importance of, we come to know little by little, the importance of Joseph. St. Teresa of Avila would say, there's nothing that she found. She couldn't go to St. Joseph, and he couldn't obtain for her by his intercession. So in all our needs and our trials, after our Lord, after Our Lady, we should really have the tenderest of devotions to St. Joseph. You know, in the mystery of the Trinity, we know that uh, God the Father is the head. We know that our Lord, as it were, is kind of like a, uh, you know, after, well, being the Son, he's under the Father. I'm not saying he's not equal to, the, obviously he's God with the Holy Spirit, but by means of the processions, you have a certain ordering in these processions. And that analogy is brought forth also in a kind of an almost upside down way uh, in the Holy Family. Because the greatest in the Holy Family, who's the greatest in the Holy Family? It's our Lord. Who's the second greatest in the Holy Family? Well, it's Our Lady. Who's the head of the Holy Family? Well, <laughs> it's St. Joseph. And if that doesn't teach us something, both not only with regards to the humility, the condescension of God, our Lord, and Our Lady, but also the profound holiness that they would entrust themselves to Joseph. Our Lord entrusted himself to Our Lady and himself and Our Lady to St. Joseph. What kind of man must St. Joseph have been to have that great honor, that great privilege? This, you know, said that by the, fruits of the, by the fruit of the tree, you know the tree. And so what kind of holiness St. Joseph must have for us? You know, to ponder these things, the gifts given him in his time, which are entrusted to his care and which he faithfully kept, which he faithfully protected. And we learn from St. Joseph how we need to act in the family. The head of the household, while being the head, really doesn't, really shouldn't set himself thinking, well, he's like the best. It may very well be that he's entrusted with a treasure which is greater than himself. Something for uh, husbands to think about, that. It may not be that, uh, you know, yeah, you're the head of the household, but you're entrusted with a great charge to take care of, to protect, as did St. Joseph. And this is true even for mothers. Don't know what you're taking care of. It hasn't become manifest yet. You might be taking care of a great, great world leader one day who might make great changes or a great, even better yet, a great saint. Might even couple the two. There might be a great saint and a great leader in the world to effect great changes in bringing about the glory of God's kingdom in today's world. <clears throat> this is, you know, one of the humilities that we have to bear in mind, you know, as we look at the Holy Family and see its importance, the importance of the figures, and yet who is its head? It's the least who's been put in charge. And yet he faithfully, with the grace of God, he faithfully fulfills that office of father and spouse. Let us turn to St. Joseph in our own day. He who is entrusted with our very life, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom my Lord condescended to obey, to heed his voice, and continues to do so in heaven. He heeds the voice as he did of his mother, as he does of his mother, so too he continues to obey even St. Joseph, rendering him that honor which he paid him in this life. And why? Because Joseph is the just man, the faithful spouse, the foster father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so our Lord continues to give him honor in heaven. Let us turn to St. Joseph in all our needs and in all our troubles. As we have to look in the Old Testament to find an analogy that helps us to understand the greatness of our Saint Joseph that we've been given because he's so silent <laughs> and yet so just that he wasn't willing to do evil to Our Lady. Uh, in fact, I think it's worth saying, I like the, you know, in this defense of Our Lady, one of my best, ex one of the explanations that I've always liked best about this is that Joseph actually thinking that our well, it was possible that he could have worked out that Our Lady was possibly the mother of God, but then knowing his, he wasn't the father of our Lord, 
didn't feel it worthy, didn't feel himself worthy to claim a paternity which wasn't his own when he thought that possibly this might be the Messiah. And so out of humility, he, he wanted to bow out. But there was always the intention from one, some of the other explanations, there was always the intention that he would take care of our Lord and our Lady, but not trying to claim a paternity which wasn't his own because he knew it could have been from the Father of above. So as we contemplate this mystery of, of St. Joseph, <clears throat> and this is, it's a, a hypothetical thing because as far as the argument runs, because we don't know the interior dispositions of St. Joseph. So it's a could it be. And one of the signs that it, it's a very strong could be that that might have been very well his view is that he's the just man. He didn't attribute evil to someone whom, even though it seemed there could be evil, but he couldn't believe that of the Blessed Virgin. This is why he's the just man. He doesn't attribute evil where he's not sure, where there's room for doubt. May we learn from St. Joseph not to attribute evil to others, but as we are told in scriptures, charity presupposes no evil. Let us imitate this just man, St. Joseph, in our own lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.